This is an educational video that aims to teach the clinical skill of retinoscopy and the application of it in ophthalmic practice. Retinoscopy is a technique that is utilised to obtain an objective measurement of an individual's refractive state. It is widely used in young and non-verbal individuals as it does not require any subjective input from the patient. During this clinical test, patients are conventionally cycloplegic as this allows a clear streak to be visualised. So when do we use retinoscopy? Retinoscopy can be used in all patients because the test does not require any communication, intelligence or visual acuity levels. They are often used in children, special needs or any patient where communication is difficult. There are three different methods of retinoscopy. The first method is using a trial frame with a working lens inserted. The second method is using a retinoscopy rack without a working lens. And the third method is using loose lenses without a working lens. This video will focus on using single lenses. This is because it prevents the discomfort of the trial frame on the patient and it also allows the examiner to quickly change the lenses during an assessment. To perform retinoscopy, the equipment required include the lens trial box and the retinoscope. The retinoscope is composed of several elements. These include the on button. To turn the retinoscope on, simply hold onto the green button and rotate. This then produces a light that looks just like that. The other parts of the retinoscope include the forehead rest, the peephole, which the examiner looks through, the cross-linear polarization filter, which needs to be down during testing, and the focusing sleeve. Raising or lowering the sleeve changes the focusing power of the beam. while turning the sleeve rotates the reflection. doing retinoscopy, you must measure your working distance. Your working distance varies from person to person, so you must measure your own distance. Pretend that you are assessing someone whilst holding a correcting lens in front of them. Using a tape measure, measure the distance in metres from your eye to the patient's eye. And here are the errors that can result in inconsistencies in the working distance. Ensure that it remains the same at all times during clinical assessments. Okay, so what I'm going to get you to do is to stir up that big letter A over there on the yeah. Snellen chart. And what's going to happen is I'm just going to use this torch mm -hmm. and shine a bright light into your eye. Mm -hmm. And you just let me know if you're uncomfortable or anything like that. Yeah, sure. I'm just going to have to touch your shoulder during the examination. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Turn on the retinoscope and slide the focusing sleeve down. Dim or turn the light off. For recording purposes, we will have the lights on. Look through the peephole of the retinoscope and shine the streak of light into the patient's eyes and move it into the pupil. Patients can be dilated and asked to fixate at a distance target. This will relax accommodation and therefore the true shape of the pupil can be observed. Our patient Ahelia has atropine as a cycloplegic agent. This is our patient Ahelia. Move the streak horizontally and then move the streak vertically. The streak that is produced from the horizontal movement depicts the 180 degree axis. And the streak that is produced from the vertical movement depicts the 90 degree axis. If the streak moves with the reflex from the retinoscope, this demonstrates a width movement. If the streak moves opposite to the reflection, this then demonstrates an against movement. When initially beginning the clinical test, it is recommended to begin with a width movement as this is easier to achieve neutralization. In our patient Ahelia, she demonstrates an, an against movement. In order to achieve a width movement, the application of a minus lens is required. 
With the use of the minus 2 lens, Ahelia still demonstrates an against movement. Hence the minus power needs to increase in order to achieve a with movement. As now with the minus 4 lens, we can see that a with movement is being demonstrated. So, how do we know if neutralization has been achieved? The streak should demonstrate several characteristics. Firstly, if the streak is close to neutralization, the streak should be brighter, faster, and wider. Once neutralized, an on off phenomenon should be seen, where the pupil fully lights up. As previously seen in our patient Ahelia, a width movement was achieved with a minus four lens, but the reflex was narrow, dull, and slow. Therefore, we need to decrease the minus power to achieve neutralization. Conventionally, we work in 0.25 increments, but this depends on the characteristics of the reflex. For example, moving from minus 4 to minus 3.75, the reflex becomes faster, but it is still very slow. Therefore, we need to move in increments more than 0.25. So now we add the lens power of minus 2.75 to quicken the assessment. And at the minus 2.75 lens power, it is very close to neutralization, but it is not yet neutralized. Now we add the minus 2.5 lens. And we can see the reflex is faster, it's brighter, and wider and the on off phenomenon is observed. To confirm that neutralization was achieved move down to minus 2.25 and then against movement should be observed. This technique is now repeated on the 90 degree axis and the minus 2 dioptic lens power achieved neutralization. If the reflex is tilted, this indicates the axis is oblique. Therefore, rotate the retinoscope sleeve so you can straddle this streak appropriately. For the recording, you must write down the gross rate and the net rate. Gross rate being the cross diagram and net rate being the overall equation. For our patient Ahalia, we observe neutralization with a minus 3 dot sphere lens at the 90 axis and a minus 2.5 dot sphere lens at the 180 axis. This is our gross rate. In order to calculate our net rate, we must start by calculating our working length. You can do this by dividing 1 by your working distance. The distance between my and Ahalia's eye was 0.6 of a metre, which is equivalent to 2 thirds. This is my working distance. Not all working distances will be the same, so it is important to measure this accurately. So 1 divided by 2 over 3 is equal to 3 over 2, or 1.5. If a psychoplegic agent is used, you have to compensate for this by adding it to your working length. 1 for atropine and 0.5 for psychopentylate. We use atropine, so we're going to add 1 to our working lens. That gives us 2.5. We have all the information we need for step 3, so now comes the fun part. You can decide if you want to work in minus lenses or plus lenses. For our example, we're going to work in minus lenses, and by working in minus lenses, we have to take the higher number and minus our working lens and atropine to get our spherical component. Minus 3 might be the bigger number, however, minus 2.5 is a higher number as it's closer to zero. Therefore, our equation would be minus 2.5 minus 2.5, which equals minus five. As for our cylindrical component, you have to determine the value needed to get from the higher number to the lower number. So the number needed to get from minus 2.5 to minus three is 0.5. This will be our cylinder. We will also use the 180 axis as we are working with the minus 2.5. So putting it all together, our net rate will be minus 5 diopter sphere with a minus 0.5 diopter cylinder at 180 degree axis. These include the on button. To turn that retinoscope, oh, it was already on! Of the streak is from the 100 degree axis. Okay. So 
Thanks for watching.